The Electronics RP15 is a Ryzen-based gaming laptop with some impressive performance on offer for the price. I'm going to show you how it performs in 20 different games and also compare it against other laptops. These are the specs of my RP15, so some good options for a gaming laptop which starts from around $1140 US dollars. The Gaming Center software lets you select between different performance modes. I've used the highest turbo mode with maximum fan speed for best performance. This is what triggers electro boost, and should allow the RTX 2060 to run above its stock 90 watt limit up to 110 watts. However no GPU overclocking was applied by default, and there's no option to disable the iGPU. We'll only be covering gaming performance in this video, so if you're new, then get subscribed for the upcoming thermal testing and full review videos. Let's start out by going through all games at all setting levels, then afterwards we'll see how the RP15 compares against some other laptops and also test screen response time. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested using the game's built-in benchmark tool, and while this test is tough on most laptops at max settings, I noticed the 115 watt 2060 in the MSI GL65 I recently tested was still able to hit 70 FPS at high settings, though there is also a CPU difference there. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode. Again the results were a bit lower compared to the in theory similar wattage 2060 in the GL65, but we'll take a look at how the RP15 and others compare in this title later. Control was tested with and without RTX enabled. I've got the results with RTX off in purple, RTX on in the green bars which is much worse, then RTX on with DLSS enabled as shown by the red bars, which was still playing quite well and looking nice. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built in benchmark, and this is another title that will use to compare with some others, but either way still easily above 60 FPS with max settings. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum, or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. Above 100 FPS was easy even with all settings maxed out, and there were big gains at minimum, where even 1% lows were above the refresh rate of the screen. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was tested in campaign mode, and I've also tested it with the settings either maxed out or at minimum for the same reason though there was less of a difference between them compared to Apex, still no issues playing though. Borderlands 3 was tested using the game's built in benchmark, and we're around 60 FPS at max settings, so not a bad result. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was also tested with the benchmark tool. In this test, ultra settings were needed to score above 60 FPS, couldn't quite get there maxed out. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature. High settings was producing average FPS similar to the screen's refresh rate, while the highest epic setting preset was still above 100 FPS. Overwatch is another less demanding game and was tested in the practice range. This time even maxed out, the average frame rate was above the screen's refresh rate, while just one level lower pushed the 1% low above 2. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark, and while the performance is plenty for this game, I have noticed that Intel processors still seem to have a little edge in this test. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane, and the results are similar to most laptops that I test. The game literally runs on a potato, so moving on. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark using Vulkan. There were only minor differences between high and ultra settings here, but even maxed out the average frame rate is higher than the screen's refresh rate, always a good sign. Metro Exodus was tested using the built-in benchmark. Most parts of the game perform a fair bit better than this, so don't take these results as a good indication of what to expect throughout the entire game. It's more of a worst case. The Division 2 was also tested with the built in benchmark, and 60 FPS at the highest ultra setting preset seems fair for another more demanding title. Monster Hunter World was tested running through the main town. It was doing well even with highest settings. The 1% low isn't far behind the average, so minimal dips in performance, but that just seems to be an attribute of this game. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built in benchmark. Very high settings was close to the 60 FPS mark, but I don't think this title benefits too much from super high frame rates. Far Cry New Dawn was also tested with the game's benchmark. There's not really much to say, so let's keep moving on. The Witcher 3 was playing well even at the highest ultra setting preset, but as is often the case with this game, it was possible to boost the frame rate a fair bit by going just one level lower, where even the 1% low at high is near the average of ultra. F1 2019 was tested using the game's benchmark tool. Again the frame rate at maximum is quite good, but much higher is possible just one level down. Then there's diminishing returns to be had by lowering further. Let's also take a look at how the RP15 compares with other laptops. 
use these results as a rough guide only as they were tested at different times with different drivers. In Battlefield 5, I've got the RP-15 highlighted in red. What I found most interesting was that the ASUS TUF A15 with same CPU but lower wattage GPU was a few frames ahead. I mean it's not enough to make a difference you'd actually be able to notice while playing, but the RP-15 should technically be able to pull more power to the GPU. The average frame rates in Far Cry 5, which was tested with the game's benchmark tool, were ahead of the A15 this time, though the 115 watt 2060 in the MSI GL65 was ahead. However, there is also a processor difference there. The 1% low from the RP-15 was above most of the other machines, as the CPU performance in this machine is excellent, as you'll see shortly. These are the results from Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the built-in benchmark at highest settings. The tough A15 with same CPU and GPU was just one FPS ahead now. Again, not a difference you'd care about in a practical sense. However, the result still doesn't make much sense to me given the GPU power differences especially as this is a GPU heavy test. There was some thermal throttling on the GPU in the RP-15 with Electroboost on when both the processor and graphics are being smashed, but I'll investigate that more in the upcoming thermal testing video. Overall the gaming performance from the Electronics RP-15 is good, but the boosted RTX 2060 wasn't quite doing as well as I expected considering its higher potential power limit, as we saw when looking at how it compares against other 90W 2060 laptops. I asked Electronics why they chose to use the 90W RTX 2060 and boost it up to 110W with Electroboost, rather than just using the new 115W version that Nvidia offers. They said that there was little difference in performance due to the 5W difference and the costs were the same, and this trade-off allows more power for the CPU. Sure enough, just quickly, if we check the differences in Cinebench, the RP-15 is offering the best result from a 4800H that I've ever seen, scoring around 10% higher in multi-core over the next best 4800H laptop I've tested, which is honestly quite impressive. So CPU performance is definitely there. Here are the screen response time results for the 1080p 144Hz screen. You can check the link in the description if you need an explanation on what all of these numbers mean, but basically the average grey to grey response time is around 5 milliseconds. And then we can see how this compares against other gaming laptops that I've tested so far. It's one of the better options that I've tested. Unfortunately there's no free sync here, which seems to be present in most other Ryzen based laptops. Granted those typically have worse screens, like the ASUS TUF A15, so that seems to be the trade off. Let me know what you thought of the gaming performance from the Electronics RP15 gaming laptop down in the comments. And if you're new here then definitely get subscribed for the upcoming thermal testing video and full review to see everything this laptop has to offer.